Hey guys, welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie and I've got to make some room down here in the basement in order to add my Atari Asteroids Cabaret machine to the lineup. So if you saw one of my latest videos, you know that I recently scored an amazing deal on a working Asteroids Cabaret for only $100. And although the game was completely working when I got it, there's a bunch of TLC we're going to need to do to it to really make it basement worthy. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to tune up that Atari Asteroids Cabaret arcade machine. There's a bunch of little stuff that we need to do, like completely disassemble it and give it a good scrub down to clean it. We're going to uh, clean the PCB edge connector to make sure it's got a really, really good connection for the video and the audio and everything. We're going to replace the 213055 bottle cap transistor on the AR1 power supply board. We're also going to reflow all of the headers on the AR1 board, as well as the uh, uh, deflection board from the monitor. We're going to replace all the buttons on the control panel. We're going to completely rebuild the marquee light, the fluorescent light fixture for the marquee light. Um, we're going to rebuild that coin door, uh, fix all that broken stuff, remove the, uh, the doorbell that was being used as a credit switch. We're gonna take the light switch off of the back of the cabinet that was being used as a power switch and a whole bunch more. So if that sounds fun, why don't we head out to the garage and get started? Let's go! Overtime! Overtime. Okay, let's dig into the Asteroids Cabaret. Uh, I think I want to start just by kind of taking it mostly apart and getting in here and seeing what's going on. Um, one interesting thing I discovered recently was, you know how in the previous video, uh, the image was sort of, you know, fading in and out, sometimes entirely to a blank screen. <laughs> and, uh, I could bang on the side of the cabinet, you know, to, to sort of bring the, the, uh, the image back. Uh, well, it turns out, um, you know, I was assuming that that was a monitor issue, right? So uh, I opened up the, uh, the back door to, to watch it happening, thinking I would see the spot killer uh, LED go on on the monitor. But in fact, I was seeing the LED on the game board go out and uh, uh, wiggling the edge connector uh, would create all kinds of noise on the, on the speaker, the edge connector go into the the game board. So now I'm thinking maybe it's an edge connector issue. So we'll we'll clean that up uh, too as part of this. But uh, yeah, let's start taking things apart. Uh, I want to kind of probably start with the power, right? That's always good advice, right? Always start with power and connections. Um, so let's get this thing uh, open. Uh, in order to take the control panel off, to take the, the bezel off and get the, the monitor out of here, there are these two uh, carriage bolts that hold this uh, metal control panel uh, in place. And it's held on with uh, a couple of wing nuts. So it's not like a, uh, a more typical uh, control panel where there's like latches to undo. It's, it's actually a, a wing nut. So let me get these off. Okay, both of the wing nuts are off, and I'll show you, it's just a, <laughs> just a relatively short carriage bolt with a big old washer and a wing nut. Is that sometimes called a thumb screw? No, wing nut. So we'll put those aside. Um, and then the control panel will uh, tilt forward. So you can see what I'm doing here. It'll tilt forward, and we can take a look at uh, what's going on in here. Okay, so with the control panel tilted forward, um, there's just a piece of smoked or tinted plexi right there over the screen. And then we have a, uh, a cardboard bezel, which is stapled on. So let me see if I can get those staples uh, pulled off. And would you, <laughs> you might be surprised, but these, uh, these cardboard bezels are kind of hard to come by. People try to make them, um, so I'm going to try to be gentle and not destroy anything. All right, there's one staple. And this looks just like a 
a paper staple. It's not like a, uh, you know, like from a, um, like a brad nailer kind of uh, staple. It's just a, <laughs> like Milton from the office swing line. All right, that's out. That was pretty easy. And we can take our little cardboard bezel out. Put that over here for safekeeping. And uh, there's our little little monitor here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me actually go ahead and take the control panel off just to give ourselves a bit more access. There's a Molex connector here. So that's disconnected and I've got uh, just two more carriage bolts. Uh, let's see. Which one of these is the correct size? There we go. This is a 7 sixteenths. All right. Okay. There we go. Oh. Oh, the uh, I got to remember that the grounding strap went through the uh, the left carriage bolt. So there's our little teeny tiny metal control panel. Very, very simple. Just, uh, you know, five leaf switches and two micro switches for the uh, Volcano uh, start buttons. I'll put that over here. All right, uh, let's spin it around. Let's disconnect the monitor. And uh, I think you can see it's just a, a single uh, connector right here. Uh, it's at 12 pins, and that's the only thing that connects the monitor. It's the only thing that should connect the monitor, bringing both the video signal and power. But the um, the little power uh, cord for the uh, uh, reproduction replacement um, uh, uh, fluorescent marquee light has been sort of zip tied to the monitor frame, so we'll disconnect that. So now the monitor, in terms of the, the back of the cabinet, should be free. So let's come back here. All right. And uh, there's just these four uh, bolts here. Literally three screws and one's been replaced with a, like a hex bolt. So let's come undo these. All right, now in theory, the monitor should come right out of the cabinet. I'm gonna put some gloves on just for a little bit of extra safety. I've cut my hands too many times on monitor frames. Uh, I think it should just lift right out, right? I don't know if there's a good way to grab this. Um, just turn this so I can get in here a little bit better. Uh, yeah, the monitor is free. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, it's tight. That is a snug fit for that frame to go in there. All right, so I'm gonna put the monitor off to the side. And before I go any further, I want to discharge this thing. And the way that you discharge a vector monitor is a little bit different than the way you char uh, discharge a typical raster monitor. Uh, what's a good way for you to see this? So you can't just, you know, what I usually do is I just short the, I just short the anode to the frame. Um, uh, uh, with my you know, sort of homemade uh, discharge tool. And that's a little bit dangerous, so that's quite dangerous. Uh, you can blow the HV diode uh, in the uh, uh, in the, the vector uh, monitor if you do that. So uh, I've got a 
HV probe. Uh, this is a uh, B and K, or no, it's a Fluke, I'm sorry. It's a Fluke model 80K-40 HV probe, high voltage probe. Uh, it plugs into your multimeter, so we'll be able to see the, um, uh, the voltage kind of bleed off, right, to tell us that it's safe. Uh, another way to do this is with a uh, one mega ohm resistor in line with the, uh, uh, the connection, so I'm just going to clip the alligator clip of the HV probe uh, to the frame. Find a good spot uh, right here. And I've got my um, uh, multimeter set on uh, DC volts. And then I'm going to come underneath here with the tip of the, my other hand's behind my back, with the tip of the HV probe and try to get it here. I can't, I'm trying to get underneath the anode cup. There we go. All right. I am making a connection. And I'm not seeing really any, I didn't see a spark or anything or whatever. So I think we are good. Let me double check something real quick first. Okay, so that's strange. I double checked the uh, black and white uh, vector monitor FAQ. Um, and I went back and even looked at the footage and, and I didn't see any voltage coming off of this thing. So uh, that's interesting uh, to me. Um, but uh, yeah, and again, this is a uh, Electra Home 15 inch, allegedly, uh, <laughs> GO5805. Uh, so this is the, the black and white vector monitor used um, in Atari cabarets and uh, cocktails and, and that sort of thing. So I think we're okay there. So uh, let's continue this. Um, I think I want to pull the boards out of here. So we'll take that edge connector off and we'll disconnect uh, the Molex connectors for the AR board. This is not the AR2. Again, this is an AR1. Um, we've got a couple of screws here. Uh, let's see. A couple of screws holding the boards in. Pull these out just to keep them safe. All right. I need these little rubber washers or spacers to help uh, avoid cracking the, uh, the boards. All right, let me see if I can pull this out of here. All right. And of course I got a phone call just as I was doing that because I uh, uh, forgot to put the phone on do not disturb mode while I started uh, filming. But yeah, here's our AR board. You can see it says right here, regulator audio Atari 79. This is a A034485-1. And it's almost like uh, only two thirds the size of like a more typical uh, AR2 or more typical as far as what I'm used to uh, seeing. And I grabbed a uh, anti-static uh, bag just to help protect the game PCB when I pull that out. So, so here this comes. All right. Let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, so here is our Atari Asteroids game PCB. See, it says right there, copyright 79 and 80, tested November 11th, 1980. It's a, a revision 05, so it says A034986 05, the handwritten revision on it, and then a handwritten serial number of 203143. And, uh, yeah, and let's come take a look at the edge connector. And we can see we got a little bit of scorching right there. It's not that bad. Uh, and it's about the same on the back. But I see some, um, especially on the backside, see that right there, there's a bit of 
oxidation uh, built up. So I think we'll want to get that uh, cleaned. But first, let me stick the PCB in this bag just for safekeeping while I do other stuff. Put that off to the side and uh, we'll see what's next in here. Uh, hmm. Uh, I kind of want to <laughs> cut this bolt that's, uh, or this uh, um, dead, uh, uh, what are these called? Deadbolt? No. Padlock. That's holding that, uh, the coin box lid down, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, and now that I've taken out the uh, monitor and the, the PCB, I'm not too worried about damaging it. Um, let me get my bolt cutters real quick. All right, here we go. Some bolt cutters here, They're really dirty. But uh, this is what you do when uh, you mean business. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> That is, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm scratching it. I'm definitely putting a scratch in it. All right, I was really starting to bend the uh, sort of bracket that the, <laughs> the lock is mounted onto. You can see that. So uh, I just unscrewed it. I was able to access it from underneath and uh, I took the two screws off that hold that bracket in place. And so now, I can get some more, and you can see, like I am right here, I'm making a dent on both sides of that shackle, but uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me get a better, uh, some better leverage on this. All right, with it out, I was able to really get some leverage on the bolt cutters, and uh, we are, we are through. Look at that. Cut right through it nice and clean. We can tweak our bracket off. Uh, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, sort of pound this back into shape with a mallet, and then uh, I'll screw it back onto the cabinet. All right. The next thing I want to do is sort of address this uh, this mess of of wiring or this hack job that's going on, and uh, yeah, remove this <laughs> light switch junction box thing. Uh, and wire it back up the right way. Obviously, this is not the original power cord. Um, it even says Husky on it. So this is like a Home Depot brand uh, replacement. Okay, uh, that's wired up adequately for now. Um, and uh, what do I want to do next? I think I want to remove the rest of this um, marquee light thingamajig. So let me uh, move the camera for that. All right, let me just show you what I'm seeing here. So we're coming inside the cabinet and there's our replacement <laughs> marquee light. And there's really just, if you're seeing it, a couple of wing nuts like that that hold this panel in place. So I'm just gonna pull those wing nuts and we'll take the whole thing out. Okay, I got that panel removed. You can see the two carriage bolts that it mounts onto. And this uh, sort of horizontal piece of wood here is really just for mounting the, uh, the marquee light assembly. And over here, if you can see some of those splinters, uh, that this, this piece had been pulling off of that uh, wooden cleat or brace, uh, which is part of the assembly that holds the the mark the um, the monitor in place that mounts the monitor, and uh, that had been separating not the monitor the monitor mounts that wasn't separating, but the the sort of horizontal piece that the um, the cross piece that the uh, the marquee light mounts onto, and so I was able to get that back into place. Uh, there were some some nails. Um, uh, uh, that had been pulled out. So I was able to sort of use clamps and squeeze that back into place. So that's good. I think we're in good shape there. And here is the board 
that the uh, marquee light assembly is supposed to mount onto. And so if we just stick this on the ground for a second so I can point out what's going on, these little clips are what hold uh, the fluorescent light bulb actually in place. So metal clips on the, the glass tube, which is interesting. Um, this, uh, these are some remnants of, whoa, it snapped right off, of uh, zip ties, I would assume, sort of holding wiring in place. This is where the, uh, the socket for the uh, starter was mounted. And then down here is where the, um, uh, uh, the ballast uh, for the fluorescent light was mounted. So uh, we're gonna save this and we will rebuild as, uh, as original as possible a, uh, a marquee light uh, assembly, but uh, that's for uh, a little bit later. And then over here is the, the replacement light that they had used. And this is sort of like a, a you know, uh, uh, we have them in our kitchen. These go sort of under the counter or uh, um, above the counters underneath uh, the cabinets to sort of illuminate, you know, put some light on the countertops. So uh, I'll just hold on to this and see if I have um, uh, uh, some sort of future use for it. We can, you know, rewire this, put a, a two prong um, <laughs> plug onto it and uh, yeah, we'll be in good shape. No need to waste this. Okay, while I've got everything open, I'm gonna pull the transformer assembly out uh, just so I can get everything cleaned up because there is a bit of uh, <laughs> uh, mouse poop oh, in, this, uh, in this cabinet. So I'm disconnecting all of the these wires and this one comes here. There we go. And these are grounding straps for the harness. We'll pull this whole thing out. And the other thing I want to do is uh, test the, bl the big blue, which is this big filter cap on the transformer assembly. All right. Put these screws back on so I don't lose them. Or these uh, nuts, rather. Oh, and I, this fuse fell off. All right, that's interesting. Might have bumped it, I don't know. Okay, so we got four screws that hold this thing to the bottom of the cabinet. Okay, four screws are loose. Pull them out for safekeeping. And now this should just lift right out. Okay, nice and heavy. Okay, before I get ahead of myself, I actually need some of the wiring from the cabinet uh, to test the big blue because I've got to power it up to test it. So I've got some of these wires plugged back in. This is the uh, connector for the power cord that goes into the wall. I have the, uh, the grounding straps reconnected just for safety. And this, uh, this connector here goes to the power plug uh, over here, or the power switch and um, uh, the interlock switches. And so I need that. I mean, I, I guess I could short these together uh, to simulate the, the power switch being on, but um, yeah. And so I've got the thing uh, sitting on a, a milk crate and tilting out of the back of the cabinet. And um, I can test uh, the big blue by looking for AC ripple uh, on the DC line. So basically what the big blue does is it uh, filters out um, AC voltage uh, from the, the DC voltage. Um, so I'm gonna turn my multimeter on to AC volts and I will turn the cabinet on. Well, actually, let me start with DC and I'll show you that it is powered on. So there we go, 13.35 or so volts uh, DC. And when I switch it to AC, I should see basically nothing, right? So, um, you know, you could see maybe, you know, some tens or um, uh, uh, hundredths, no, point, point zero, what am I saying? <laughs> uh, maybe up to a couple hundred millivolts, right? But you don't want to see uh, 
you know, anything approaching like half a volt of, of AC. Uh, the other way to do it is with the, um, uh, the AR board plugged in. So let me go ahead and uh, set that up. Okay, the other way to test the big blue is uh, from the test lugs on the AR board. And so I've got my negative lead or my ground connected to the ground uh, test lug on the AR board. And I've got my positive lead uh, clipped onto the 10.3 uh, volts DC unregulated line, okay? And uh, I've got everything plugged back up and we'll look at what's going on here on the multimeter. Right now it's set to uh, DC volts. And so we've got about 12.7 volts uh, DC on the unregulated 10.3 uh, volts uh, DC line, which is good. And now we can switch it over to AC and we should see a tiny little value. So uh, yeah, about uh, 0 0.04546 volts. So uh, this is telling me that our big blue is nice and healthy and does not need to be replaced, which is great. All right, let me get you caught up on a couple of things I did off camera. So I vacuumed out the inside of the cabinet very thoroughly to get rid of all of the mouse poop and, and dust and, and all that nasty stuff that was fouling up the, uh, the cabinet. Uh, and then I sprayed it all down inside and out with Simple Green and wiped it down pretty good uh, just to get everything uh, uh, nice and clean. I also kind of quickly cleaned off the transformer assembly just with a, a soft bristle brush, you know, just to knock off all the, the loose dust and everything. I didn't spray it down, didn't do anything like that. Uh, and then I mounted it back into the cabinet and made uh, all of the harness connections uh, back again. Another thing I did was clean uh, the edge connector uh, housing, right? So um, I mentioned earlier that I think some of the, the issues that I'm having with the, uh, the, the you know, video cutting in and out and, and noise on the speaker is actually coming from a loose edge connector uh, connection. So uh, this side that you know, plugs into the, uh, the harness has all of these pins, right? Uh, this you know should remind you a little bit of like a uh, a cartridge uh, video game console if you're familiar with that. Uh, so what I did was t I took a little teeny tiny uh, flat screwdriver and I gently bent back all these pins, bent them back towards the middle so they'll 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 grab onto the board a little bit better. Uh, and then I, I sprayed it uh, with a little bit of deoxit, which is like a, a contact cleaner uh, that also breaks down and prevents uh, corrosion and oxidation from interfering with those uh, connections. So that should be good on this side. Uh, on the, on the uh, PCB, uh, I need to clean this side too. And you've seen you know, me before uh, working on the Ms. Pac-Man PCB where uh, I really had to go kind of crazy because it was really, really, really badly burnt up and I had to replace all the fingers with copper tape. Now on this Asteroids, it's really not that bad. There's a little bit of oxidation I can see and a little bit of scorching here uh, where the, the ground is connected. Um, but I don't need to replace it. I don't need to repair it. I can just clean this and we should be okay uh, with that to have good solid connections. Um, so there isn't any you know, resistance that builds up because of oxidation, causing heat, causing scorching, causing all kinds of problems. So what I'm going to do is, uh, and this is a technique I learned from Andrew B on the claw forms. I've done it on my Tempest before is, I've got this scratch pen. It's a fiberglass scratch pen. It's actually getting to the end and I, I bought another one. And it's just these little tips, uh, these like strands of fiberglass in here that will allow me to sort of scratch off gently uh, all the oxidation. Um, and then I'll clean that off with uh, isopropyl alcohol and then I'll put a little bit of uh, deoxid uh, uh, on it. This is the, the can of deoxid that I have, deoxid D5. You don't wanna spray this on directly because it comes out really, really fast. Um, and it makes a mess of everything. So I'm just gonna spray it onto a little bit of it onto a piece of, of paper towel and wipe that down. So let me show you quickly, you know, what I'll do to uh, clean this thing off. I'm just gonna come in here and I can see it right away. You might not be able to see it on camera. Uh, this, these uh, connectors get nice and shiny. You gotta be careful because little pieces of fiberglass go everywhere. You don't wanna breathe that in. You don't wanna get that sort of, you know, it'll come lodged into your skin actually. Um, so I'm just going to clean this off. I'll do all these uh, fingers on both sides and then I'll come back. You can even see in the camera. Yeah, it's getting nice and shiny down here. I'm going to do that in all these pins both sides uh, and then I'll show you in a second what I do to, to finish cleaning them off. All right, now all the fingers on the edge connector are looking nice and shiny. I did that on both sides. Got to go kind of easy because you can sort of take off uh, the plating and expose the copper underneath and you don't necessarily want to do that. If you go crazy, you can always fix it. You can always retin it. And uh, there's just a couple of spots where I can see a tiny bit of copper poking through. 
but uh, I'm not too uh, worried about that. And uh, I do see a tiny spot right here. I want to clean up a little bit better. It's just showing up. Oh, it's just a trick of the camera. So um, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I want to wipe it down uh, first with some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to put a little bit on a paper towel and we'll wipe this down like this, just with this uh, isopropyl to get it nice and clean and then uh, it'll evaporate very quickly. I'll do it on the other side as well. All right. Just to make sure, yeah, you can see a little bit of gunk is coming up. All right, that looks good. And then I'll dry relatively quickly. And then I'm gonna take another piece of paper towel and spray a little bit of the deoxit uh, on it. Again, don't spray directly on the, uh, on the edge connector because you'll it'll just come out way too fast and you'll have an enormous uh, mess on your hands. So I'm just gonna come over here, over the trash can, and spray a little bit on. All right, that's plenty. Now that's more than enough. All right. And uh, I guess I never noticed this. It looks a little pink on the paper towel. So just come in here and wipe this down. You don't need a ton, but this will just coat these and um, prevent, I think, I think it helps prevent uh, corrosion uh, in the future. So flip it, do it on the other side. This is a really, really quick and easy thing to do. All right, and I'm gonna let that evaporate and uh, should be good to go. Just make sure I don't leave any pieces of paper towel lint that's stuck in places. So uh, yeah, that looks nice and clean now. So like I said, I'm gonna let this dry uh, before we move on to the next thing. Okay, the next thing I want to do is try rebuilding this uh, fluorescent fixture uh, for the marquee light to make it as original as possible. So we replaced the modern fluorescent uh, light fixture that had been replaced here. Uh, but I want to bring this back to as original as possible just because, you know, that's how I like to do things with my with my restorations. So originally, and I've consulted with the uh, the schematics we had, a bulb here sort of sitting in these uh, metal brackets, which kind of silly, metal on glass. Uh, we had our um, ballast mounted right here, and you can sort of see the outline uh, of it on the, on the board. We had a socket for a starter right here, and it was all wired up. So I've got pretty much everything I need to rebuild this, I think. Um, I've got a uh, replacement uh, ballast right here. I've got a uh, a socket that should work uh, for the starter. I've obviously got replacement starters. I've got a bulb. Um, and what's interesting is there wasn't, there, there weren't like, um, and they're called like, I don't know, tombstones or something that usually get mounted onto the board that the uh, bulb sort of screws into. Uh, but instead, uh, the original, uh, according to the schematics, it had these almost like V-shaped connectors uh, that just sort of uh, clip onto the ends of the uh, 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 of the fluorescent tube and those those clips themselves those ends themselves aren't mounted to the board So it's really the the these like brackets here hold the tube in place uh, Which I thought was kind of interesting. So I'm going to attempt to wire this up again. I've consulted the original schematic and um, I looked at my other games to sort of get a sense of how those were wired up. So I think I have an understanding of, of what to do, but of course, you know as always, uh, we'll see when I actually get it put together if it works or not. So I want to dry fit this first uh, to get a sense of, of how, much, um, how much slack I have to uh, work with. So I don't know if maybe I want to go like this and this can go down to the connector. Um, and let's see. I'm just kind of messing with this here <laughs> just to sort of see how much, uh, you know, wire I've got to, to work with. And these are real short. These will sort of go right here. Um, this will go over here. And these wires are so tiny. 
Okay. Okay, after a bunch of checking, uh, I've actually decided to call a bit of an audible. So I wanted to use these original, or these connectors that are as, as close to the original as possible, but the gauge of the wire down here, if you can see it, is just way too tiny. And um, I don't feel good about making a connection with uh, wiring that is so, so small. And at first I was a little bit disappointed that this is the um, starter socket that Amazon sent to me because I thought I was buying a brand new one. Uh, this is clearly a used one. The, the connectors are a bit scratched up. But it uh, turns out it was a blessing in disguise because I've got connectors here and everything here, the wiring is a, luff, a lot uh, heavier gauge. So I'm going to feel better about uh, attaching them. I'm just a little bit concerned that hopefully I have enough clearance on both sides. And I thought about um, you know taking this connector off and using it the problem is, uh, if I can find it here, uh, inside there are these, uh, these pins, and I found some uh, female like Molex connectors that were about the same gauge. The problem is these things have a very short connection part and they bend over to fit inside of that housing, and I, I just don't think I'll be able to, to match that. So I'm gonna try to roll um, with this. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start getting this together. Um, I'm gonna try to mount uh, components onto the board, onto the panel with uh, the original uh, screw holes if I can, or whenever I can. So we'll put that one here. We'll put this one there. Again, just trying to approximate as closely as possible um, what was here originally. And we've already failed a bit with these connectors, but Hey, we tried. So, uh, buh, 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 buh. let's get this side going over here. And uh, let's see if the screw will fit through that connector. Maybe just barely. Put that there. And uh, I think this um, this uh, socket for the, uh, what do you call it, starter is a little bit longer. The mounting points are a little bit farther apart than they were originally. So we need to put a new hole here. I'm not going to pre-drill it. I just <laughs> used my awl to get a, uh, a little hole going there. All right, we'll mount this. We're kind of cutting into the plastic, but hey. And look at that. <sighs> I broke the socket. I broke the socket. This was the piece that I waited the longest for. Oh my goodness. And that's not fixable. That's, that is busted. Oh my goodness. What am I going to do now? Let me think about this. Okay. I still can't believe I did that, but I am going to try to uh, repair it. I've got some super glue on it and a clamp holding it together. And uh, I'm gonna let that cure for about 24 hours before I try to put any more uh, pressure on it. And geez, what a silly, silly mistake that was, but hey, it happens. So while that's uh, drying and curing, uh, I'm just gonna move on. The next thing I wanna do is uh, pay a little bit of attention to the AR board. Uh, this is basically the power supply board um, uh, in the cabinet. And uh, you know, <sighs> There's not really a whole much, uh, uh, much you need to do, especially since this is a known working AR board. Really all I'm gonna do is replace the, um, the 2N3055 uh, bottle cap transistor on the heatsink. This is basically what controls the you know, five volts uh, regulated uh, DC line. Um, you can go and recap this, but generally speaking, these caps don't get worked that hard. And 
unless it wasn't working for some reason, you know, there's really not a, a, a compelling cause to go and replace those. So I'm going to leave those. I probably will actually um, reflow the, the header pins of the, the three connectors on the board. Uh, but the main thing that I want to do is replace this, uh, this transistor right here. And actually, if we take a look, based on the date code, we can tell that this is actually the original transistor. So this is a Motorola, you know, the logo right there, 2N3055. Um, and the date code here tells us this was manufactured in 1980 for 80, and then 39 is the 39th week of the year, and I think that's like the end of sep end of September, beginning of October. So, uh, yeah, that is the original one, and it served its useful life. Um, so we are going to say goodbye to it, and uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and desolder it. So we can install our new uh, transistor, and yeah, I guess, wow, even though this one is uh, original, it had a, a silicone pad on it. Interesting. Did they remove this and put the original one back in place? I don't recall, did, or did, uh, huh, or did um, somehow... Uh, Atari ship some of these actually with uh, these sill pads. Interesting. Okay, so I've shown you this mostly before. If you see, uh, there's a polarity to these transistors. So the two the two holes where the leads go are closer to this end than they are to this end. So you can't put it upside down, right? So uh, similarly, you can see the legs are a little bit off center. They're closer to here than they are to there. So we're going to insert it that way. Yeah, I think that's good. So uh, here we go. A fresh 2N3055 transistor on the heatsink of our AR board. So yeah, I'm gonna go through and um, reflow these headers. I can do a couple uh, just together. I did this set of four right here, this, this four pin uh, connector. All right, all those headers are nice and reflowed. Uh, so we can actually go ahead and test this in the cabinet. So there are some nice uh, test points that we can use um, to test that the voltages being produced are correct. And you saw me kind of use these to test the uh, um, the big blue. So we'll attach our ground to this ground test point, and then we will test this uh, positive 10.3 volts DC unregulated line, uh, which we kind of already did. And then there's also this test point for the plus five volts uh, DC. This is a regulated line. This is the line that the board primarily uses. Um, we've got speaker um, test points over here that we don't really need to use right now. So uh, yeah, let's throw this in the cabinet and uh, test those voltages. Okay, I've got the AR board back into the cabinet. I've got the wiring harness plugged back in. I've got the uh, uh, main power cord going into the wall. And I've got my multimeter hooked up to the 10.3 uh, volts DC unregulated line. So let's turn it on. And uh, yeah, we've got almost 13 volts, uh, which is fine. Again, that's an unregulated line. So as long as it's uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 10.3 and not way, way off, uh, we should be good. So. Let me disconnect from this and plug into the five volt line. And we are a bit high. All right, so that says uh, 6.192 volts, which uh, and we should see five volts there. So that's a little bit high. Uh, let me look at uh, making an adjustment. So bear with me. Okay, I double checked and uh, according again to Andrew B on Clove, uh, world renowned vector expert and knower of lots of things, uh, that's totally fine. So an Asteroids AR, uh, when it's not hooked up to a load, uh, will typically read high around 6.2 volts when it's expected to be fine. And that's, uh, that's perfectly normal, that's to be expected, that's just what it does. Um, so that's good, because that's what we saw about 
you know, just shy of 6.2 volts. Um, so I'm going to say that that is okay for now. And um, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on it when we, uh, we'll power it on. Um, when we plug in the game board, we will power on the, uh, the cabinet with the uh, multimeter, keeping an eye uh, on that five volt line. So, uh, so that's good. I think the AR, um, the AR1 board is good for now. Uh, turning my attention to the monitor, I really don't want to do much. Uh, I do have a cap kit. You know, I've got transistors for it. There are these four frame transistors down on the bottom of the cabinet uh, down there. And I think there's one that kind of hides. Um, is it inside the HV cage or something like that? Uh, uh, I've got a cap kit. I've got new transistors. I don't really want to mess with it. Uh, all I really want to do right now is uh, uh, reflow the, the headers. So let me come in and disconnect uh, the connectors. There we go. There's our Geo5805 uh, deflection board. So let's take this over here to the soldering station. We'll move our view over here as well. Okay. Come in like so to give you uh, a nice up close look and uh, yeah, take a look at what we're dealing with here. Uh, let's see, five different fuses. We will double check those real quick. Uh, everything is working though. So uh, this is the, uh, the plug that goes to the harness. This is really the single plug that the, uh, uh, the monitor gets so that provides it with power and the, uh, the video signal. And again, because this is a vector, not a raster monitor, it's not like a normal RGB signal. It's actually voltages driving uh, the beams of the vector monitor uh, directly. So, yeah, but things look uh, pretty good here for the most part. Uh, only a handful of caps in addition to these two large filter capacitors here. I've got replacements for everything, but again, I don't want to just go willy-nilly uh, changing stuff. Uh, underneath here, um, this thing looks pretty clean. I don't think anyone's really worked on this at all. Um, so... That's kind of neat. Um, yeah, so why don't we just uh, focus our attention on these header pins. Uh, before I do that, let me just, just because I'm here, double check all these fuses. And I'm testing them from the fuse holders. All right, all five fuses are good. And, uh, ba -ba -ba. So uh, yeah, I think overall we're in good shape and I'm just going to uh, reflow the header pins, but we've got quite a few. So we've got a, uh, a seven pin connector with one removed here, five pin connector with one removed. This is another uh, seven pin connector keyed, keyed the same way. Well, that's a terrible design. <laughs> you could put your transistors in backwards, but maybe that doesn't matter because maybe they're the same values. Uh, this is a uh, five uh, pin connector with uh, one position removed. And I've also got all of the, the connections. Um, I guess I'm not really in frame. All of the connections from the, uh, uh, the main uh, external you know, uh, harness connector. And uh, this goes to all these different spots. So we'll make sure to, I think it's 12 uh, of them, make sure that we reflow those individual 12 uh, header pins. So uh, let me flip the board over and get to work on that. Okay, I got all the headers reflowed on the deflection board on the monitor, and uh, that's all I did. I thought about doing a cap kit. I thought about replacing the frame transistors and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I decided against it out of the principle of uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, I've got that all those parts on hand that I can, uh, I can install if and when uh, the need arises. But I think we're ready for uh, some additional testing. So... First, I'm going to test uh, with the monitor disconnected, right? We already tested uh, the AR1, uh, the AR power supply board. That looked good. Without a load, it was just shy of 6.2 volts uh, DC, which is what we expect. With a load, with the board uh, connected to it, that should come down to 5 volts. Uh, so in order to test that, I do have the game PCB mounted back into the cabinet. The edge connector uh, is plugged in. And I've got my multimeter test points. Uh, the, the black lead is connected to ground on the PCB. 
and the red lead is connected to five, point, uh, five uh, volts. So uh, I've got the uh, cabinet power cord plugged into the wall, and we'll keep an eye on the multimeter right here. Uh, as I switch the game on, if I see anything other than about five volts, I'm going to immediately uh, turn it off. So uh, here goes. Okay, 4.9. Um, that's a tiny bit low, uh, but that should be that should be okay. So uh, if I really want to, I can adjust. Uh, there is a, a potentiometer, uh, <laughs> a potentiometer, a pot. Uh, on the uh, on the AR board, it's got some hot glue on it from the factory to hold it in place. But 4.93, let's call it. Uh, I think that's uh, I think that's okay. So we're going to disconnect that. Uh, I'm going to come in here and uh, hit the test switch. Um, put the game on test so that we have a stable image, right? I don't want one that's necessarily all jumping around because uh, I want to measure. Oh, yeah. Uh, before I hook up the monitor, I want to measure the voltages, the output voltages uh, being produced by the game PCB. Uh, so we do that just by moving our red uh, test lead from the multimeter. And uh, we'll leave it on, we'll leave the, the ground, uh, the black uh, lead on, um, on uh, ground. And then we'll hook up the red one to, this is Y out. And again, we have it on uh, DC volts, and we have the test uh, switch on. So uh, we want to see, hold on, let me double check the, the correct voltages. OK, I double checked. And from the X and Y outputs, uh, we're hoping to see between negative 2 and positive 2 DC volts and around 3 AC volts. So again, uh, we've got our lead connected to the Y out. And let's take a look at the uh, multimeter set to DC volts. So let's see what we got there. And uh, OK, it's uh, right around 0. So that should be fine for DC. And AC is uh, a little high, uh, just over 3. Uh, I'm not super worried uh, about that. OK, and we'll turn it off. And we'll move it from Y out to X out. Turn it back to DC volts, power it on, and uh, we're about you know, just shy of negative one half volt DC. And on AC, wow, AC is a bit high. Hmm. AC is a bit high at uh, 5.5, 5. 5, just around 5.5 5 volts uh, AC. Uh, let me think about that before hooking it up to the monitor. OK, I turned the, uh, the cabinet off, um, turned off test mode, and uh, powered it back on. And you can see the voltages look a little bit better now. It's around 3 volts. Sometimes it goes a little bit over it, like now. Sometimes it's a little bit under. This is going through attract mode. So I think that's probably uh, OK. So uh, I think we are safe to go ahead and uh, plug this into the cabinet. So, or plug the... Uh, plug the monitor uh, in. So I've got the game turned off. And uh, let me come over here and plug everything up. And I've got to wrap this up uh, pretty quickly because I need to go uh, record or do the live stream of the uh, my podcast, the Coin Jam podcast that I do with Liam from Retrobotics. I do it with, uh, am I going to be able to get this here? Liam from Retrobotics on YouTube and uh, Jeremiah from CoinOp Corner. How am I going to position this? And uh, Kay from, there we go like this, from Prime Arcade on mostly uh, TikTok and Facebook, That's where he does videos. So uh, I need to <laughs> wrap this up so I can get that live stream going. I'm usually, uh, every time so far, I've been the one that hosts the live stream. So. OK, um, let me turn off the house lights real quick. And if we power this back up, we should hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, see asteroids on that game screen right there.
that neck glow on the tube. And uh, I saw something drawn for a second. Here we go. Okay. Look at that. That is a nice, stable picture. Uh, it looks even better in person. Nice and bright. And uh, I don't know if I can get it. The, the, the camera's just not doing it any justice. It's a really, really good looking image. Uh, focus is perfect. Perfect. The brightness is really good. You're getting a ton of glare just because the sun hasn't gone gone down yet. But uh, yeah, let me put it on uh, test. All right. I think we can uh, probably adjust that image uh, just a little bit. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, it's great. Um, yeah, and I don't have the, uh, oh, I don't have the um, uh, control panel hooked up just yet. But right now, I would say that's a, uh, that's a successful test. Uh, so we've got the board is still working. Uh, the AR uh, power supply is still working. And the monitor is still working. So that's great. So uh, let me get this all packed away uh, and get ready to hop on that uh, uh, podcast live stream. And I'll, I'll come back. And uh, once we get the thing into the cabinet, maybe we'll, uh, or at some point we're going to adjust uh, the geometry. I want to make it a little bit taller. Um, the width is probably okay, but yeah, we can, we can stretch the image out vertically uh, just a little bit. So uh, yeah, uh, making progress, which is great. All right, I got a couple minutes. <laughs> and the, uh, the uh, cabinet's out and set up, so why don't we actually try adjusting the height real quick. And I believe that's just with the Y gain, right? On the, uh, on the PCB. Yeah. How's that look? I'd say that's pretty bang on. I don't want to go all the way to the edge. Um, well, that looks like a, uh, a nice square picture. Like I said, we'll get everything perfectly adjusted later on when uh, I've got the control panel in and we can sort of do everything. But uh, yeah, that's a, a good looking image <laughs> right there if I do say so myself. All right, with that stuff out of the way, it should hopefully be mostly downhill smooth sailing from here. Again, famous last words. So it's been 24 hours and I think the super glue holding the, um, the starter socket back together should be fully cured, fully dry by now. Uh, I do have it you know, mounted onto the plate or onto the board for the marquee light. And I've plugged in these two little ends into the sides here. I'm a little bit worried if it's, it might be too wide, but hopefully we should be okay. And again, I consulted the wiring uh, diagram in the uh, Asteroids Cabaret manual and, and looked at a few of my other marquee lights and I think I have a sense of what's going on. So what's uh, left to be done here is wiring this end of the uh, light wiring uh, to one end of the uh, ballast and the other end uh, from the marquee light and the other end of the ballast will go into a, a Molex connector to plug into the power. So let's dive into this. There we go. Pull it right out. Snip it right off at the pin. And strip it just a little bit. My automatic wire strippers. Okay. And grab a wire nut. Okay. I think that's fine. And, uh, Bring this down here. Okay. And I think the only thing I need to do, or the last thing I need to do is uh, wire up this uh, Molex connector. Okay, the thing that was confusing me was this is a, a three pin, a three position uh, connector. And uh, on my Williams games, where I've you know sort of spent a lot of time working on the fluorescent marquee lights, 
not all three pins are populated uh, and, and they, they aren't grounded on the Williams games. And technically, you know, fluorescent light fixtures don't need to be grounded to function, um, but I think they're supposed to be grounded for uh, safety reasons. And it looks like in the cabinet, um, all three positions are populated and there is a ground that goes to the, the middle pin. So I went ahead and, and rigged something up. <laughs> I got this ground wire uh, with a, uh, a ring terminal sort of tied into the uh, uh, into the, the ballast here, which I guess is a, a, as good a place as any. So let me come in here and all of these three wires uh, have had pins crimped on. So I'm just gonna come in and uh, get them into this housing, connector housing. All right, all three pins are in the housing. I'm just gonna throw a quick zip tie on here kind of contain these wires a bit and keep them from going all over the place. Just a little bit of cable management never hurt. So uh, yeah, let me throw in, <laughs> I almost forgot, throw in a starter into the socket. And these are just FS2 starters. You get them anywhere, super, super common. And uh, there we go. Uh, starters in place. So let's uh, let's come over here and put this sucker into the cabinet. All right. Uh, I don't think that'll be in the way. And hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there's enough uh, wire to make this connection. I was a little things were a little tight. And yeah, like I said, I put locks on the cabinet so I was able to remove. Uh, this thing that had been previously a little latch holding the uh, holding the back door closed. So come in like this. All right, so we're mounted in there. Everything's looking good. Hopefully, I can make this connection. And yeah, I got plenty of room. All right. We are connected. Uh, I've disconnected the uh, <laughs> game uh, PCB just in case I really screwed up something with the wiring. I don't want to backflow anything into the into the cabinet. So uh, let me position you so you can see the marquee light up. All right, we'll turn off the lights. House lights are off. We'll turn the workbench light off. Uh, the only light I got in here right now is the citronella candle burning. Let's turn her on. I can find the switch. <sighs> Nothing. Oh. <laughs> Let me do the trick from before. The last time when I was doing this. Oh, do I have all my... There we go. Ah, oh, the interlock switch. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Somehow this interlock switch had uh, came undone. Wow. Look how good that looks. Look how good that looks. Nice and bright. That's such a such a good marquee. I mean the design is great, All right? Nice bright colors. Iconic. And uh, look how I mean it's immaculate. It's in great shape. I don't know what that popping was. I hope it wasn't the, the speaker making that noise. But uh, yeah, isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? Worth the, worth the effort. Well, that <laughs> I think so. Uh, you can be your own judge of that. All right, coming down the home stretch, and the next thing I want to do is uh, replace these buttons. You know, we looked at this before, and... You know, they're, they're borderline. They're just a little bit too far gone. I'd rather put uh, new buttons on. You know, there's accurate enough replacements available and it'll make the uh, it'll make the control panel pop. Plus, you know, I've been noticing that, you know, while playing the game that uh, a couple of the buttons, the springs are a bit gone, you know, worn or whatever. So just loosening all these pal nuts and we're going to go one at a time just so we don't risk 
um, connecting the wrong leaf switches and then having to figure out what we did wrong. So let's get this first one off and uh, there we go. I got these replacement buttons from Arcade Shop. Okay, there we go. Look how grody that is. That's one of the better ones too. I'm not going to throw these away. I'll hold on to them just in case I decide, you know, down the road um, to go back. We can always do that. Another thing I'm going to do is while I've got everything out, I'm going to clean and adjust the leaf switches. So you can use like a piece of uh, business card. And I didn't want to put some east <laughs> name and phone number and email on the screen. So I just grabbed a piece of cardstock and you slide it between the two contacts and just drag it through. And look at all that. Look at all that crud. Do that a couple of times until it starts coming up relatively clean. Dang. Might need to uh, <laughs> get some more cardstock. This is filthy. Wow. Goodness gracious. All right, I'm also going to kind of come in here and uh, adjust the leaf switch so that it's just just not making contact um, so I can get really responsive responsive buttons you know I think there's a, a bit of an art to this and there might be a tool to get the gap right but I look for I don't know millimeter or two between them so pretty happy with that yep and I'll grab one of my replacement buttons here. Nice, brilliant, shiny white. There we go. Feed this through like so. And we'll get our hell nut back on. I might have been too aggressive adjusting that leaf switch. You don't want to go crazy tightening these hal nuts. Make them just a bit tighter than uh, hand tight. That looks really good. All right, let's see the the difference in the light. Look at that, almost night and day. So yeah, I'm gonna go do the uh, the other uh, four. Uh, I'll clean the leaf switches, replace the buttons, and then I'll, I'll come back and show you what it looks like at that point. All right. Doesn't that look good? Five new buttons installed. Nice and bright white, shiny new with the uh, leaf switches adjusted the way I want. So now I can come back in and we can uh, ba -ba -ba, reinstall. How did this go? I think this went like, <laughs> am I gonna forget? How did this, yeah, it went like this, okay. <laughs> Trying to remember how the uh, control panel mounted and it mounted like this. Okay. Okay, come in like so. Kind of <laughs> prop it up with my legs so it doesn't so it doesn't fall away. All right, like that. Right? Is this right? Yeah, it's got to be like this. Okay, the side goes in like that. All right, we are installed and grounded. All right, that'll work. And I can come and reconnect our control panel Molex. Okay. Is that in all the way? Yep. Yeah. Okay, we're in all the way. So, uh, yeah, let's turn our attention down here a little bit. Because the next thing I want to do is take this coin door off and fix up uh, the nonsense, the hack job. Uh, that's going on down here. Let's 
So yeah, here's our uh, mechanism. We'll bring this over to the workbench. Okay, uh, what do we got going on here? Oh, they drilled. Oh, look at that. Can you see that? Here, let me show you. Barbarians. They drilled into my coin door. But I think we'll be able to cover that up. And then over here on the coin door mechanism, uh, turns out I didn't need to solder uh, the wires back onto the uh, coin switch uh, because if you see here uh, on the side that was still intact, it had quick disconnects. Uh, so I just crimped on uh, quickly a couple of these quick disconnects and we're back in action. And um, yeah, uh, I think that's all I did. Did we ever look at the coin counters on this? Uh, it's got two, so one says 59,862, and one says 18,724. I'll ask uh, Professor Pac-Man to uh, <laughs> do that math and see how much uh, money this game uh, made over the years. Um, also, one more thing I did do, um, if you noticed before, these uh, uh, the, the coin lights were out, so I just replaced them. They're Type 47s uh, with some uh, 47 bulbs that I had on hand. Uh, but I'm actually running kind of low, so I'm going to have to order some in my next uh, next time I order parts. So let's get mounted back up on the tripod, and uh, I think we're ready to put this coin door back together. I think we're done. Uh, I think we're ready to test this thing, so let me grab the monitor and very carefully put this thing back into the cabinet. Guys, I think we're ready to fire this up. Um, we'll fire it up like normal and uh, then we'll do the test mode just to make sure everything's okay. So let's turn off the house lights. The overhead garage lights. Let's turn off the workbench light and uh, cross your fingers. Three, two, one. I hear HV. Coin door lights are on. Marquee light is on. Uh, I can sort of see some light coming through down here, but that's fine. Do we have an image on the monitor? Not yet. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Um, there's some light bleeding up here. You can sort of see coming from the control panel. It's not terrible, but I might want to put in something to kind of block that. Um, if you can see down here, yeah, those coin door lights look really nice. Um, I don't know if you're able to see what I'm seeing down here. I'm getting some bleed, some bleeding light uh, here. Um, maybe this is, that's sort of weird that it's not in all the way. Might have to investigate that. And uh, up on the monitor, there's a little bit of bleed from the uh, marquee light. Uh, but uh, yeah, that monitor looks great. Fired up, no problem. Nice and bright. Uh, yeah, I mean, vector monitors look a little bit weird on camera. And I am going to turn on the overhead lights for a second. Um, it looks great in person, so let's see what it's looking like now. Uh, oh yeah, too much glare. Anyway, let's, uh, let's drop a couple quarters in and see if those coin mechs are working. There were, they were a little bit dirty. I should clean them at some point, but uh, all right, grab a couple quarters. All right, uh, going on the left side right now. 
Okay, it did not like that quarter. Right side. Okay, uh, that went through. I don't have a coin box. I don't have a right size for it. All right, I'll have to figure out what's going on with this. There we go. Uh, it worked. Left coin mech accepted. I've got the one and two start lights going. Are they supposed to be out of sync like this? Uh, I thought in most Atari games, when you had the ability to play two player, they would flash at the same time. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, okay. Before I play a game, I want to try something. Um, let me grab my keys. Let's open this up and it's gonna turn off when I uh, open it up just because, uh, you know, the interlock switch will pull. But I'm gonna hit the test switch, put it into test mode. Uh, there we go. Pull the interlock. And uh, there we go. We are in test mode. And I think I should be able to hit buttons now. And the slam switch. All right, I think, uh, and I don't know what those numbers mean. <laughs> yeah, the buttons are nice and sensitive, which is great. Uh, I don't know what those numbers mean. <laughs> Let's turn it off, turn the test switch off, grab my quarters that fell down below. Uh, let's see, oh, one's up here. Uh, I think the other one dropped to the bottom of the cabinet, which is fine. All right, let's, uh, let's play a game, right? We earned it. We got this thing working nice again. I mean, I got it in working shape, but uh, again, what are we gonna say? What are we gonna call this? We spruced it up. Um, all right. Uh, trying to find a good spot for the camera here. That looks fine. And again, like down here, it looks a little bit weird. The, the Atari 1971. I think that's because the, the Plexi is a little bit scratched. In person, it looks nice and bright and uh, sharp. So there we go. It says push start at the top. So let's, uh, let's play a game here. Player one. All right. Speaker's nice and great. Yeah, so maybe it was that, mostly that, uh, what do you call it? Edge connector, that was the issue. There we go, UFO. Got him. Got him. I don't want to bore you, but uh, I would like to farm for a high score here. Uh, I think I might want to reposition the uh, cardboard bezel a little bit. Seems like it's coming. It's too far down on the top. Oops. Accidentally blew up the last asteroid. Oh, got me. Oof, wasn't paying attention. It's waiting for a good spot to have me reappear. Oh man, I had too many bullets already going on the screen. Yeah, again, this is not a tutorial on how to play. Yeah, buttons feel good. There's a UFO. Oh, uh, there's the small one. That's worth a thousand points, right? Two asteroids left. There's my little small friend again. Got him. I think he crashed into... Okay, he crashed into an asteroid, so... Here we go. This is the third board. 
Alright. You enjoying this? Oh no, game over. I didn't even get 10,000. Oh, here we go. Put my initials in. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think I'll wrap up the video there. There are a couple more things I want to do to this machine. Um, uh, that, uh, what do you call it? Um, power cord. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, it's the strain relief bushing, a power cord plate that goes on the back of the cabinet. I'm going to make a new one of those. I'll get some, some uh, plastic and cut it to size and put it all together. Uh, what else do I want to do? Yeah, this, uh, this coin reject button um, might need some finagling. This one's working great. I don't know if, I think it might be the pork chop is a little uh, stiff and not like, I don't know, you gotta work it back and forth to get it back out. Uh, I'll probably need to clean those coin mechs, um, but uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe paint these uh, carriage bolts, who knows. Um, but you know, a little patina never hurt anybody. So uh, yeah, really happy with uh, how this turned out. You know, great deal. A little bit of work to make it basement worthy. So I'm gonna have to figure out where this is gonna go downstairs in the basement. Um, so stay tuned for some sort of uh, rearranging of the lineup down there. But this is definitely gonna go into the office. I'll keep uh, for sure all the vectors uh, in my office so I can keep a, a close watchful eye on them. Uh, what else do I want to do to this thing? Uh, oh, I've got a, uh, a high score save kit uh, from Brazington uh, that I want to install. Not the multi kit, just the uh, the high score kit. Um, and we'll do that maybe in a, a short video or something at some point. But uh, yeah, <laughs> another game ready to be added to the lineup down in the basement. And uh, what a special one this is. One of only 600 ever made an Atari Asteroids Cabaret. So uh, yeah, I think that'll do it for this episode. Um, you know, if you're if you're ever curious about the the tools and parts uh, and everything that I use in any of my videos, you can always go down to the video description down below. It's got links to all the parts and tools that I use uh, as often as I can, you know, as long as I can find them available for sale somewhere. So check those links out there. And, you know, whenever I can do it, uh, they're affiliate links. So. If you uh, buy something through one of those links, it uh, you know, sends a couple pennies my way. So that's a great way to support the channel. Uh, and also all the great feedback that all of you provide, the, you know, liking the video, sharing it, you know, leaving a comment telling me what you liked, what you didn't like, you know, what you would have done differently. Um, you know, all the subscriptions, we, we just hit a thousand and it's insane. I, I can't believe it. We've only been doing these videos for like seven months and we're already over a thousand subscribers. Uh, I'll be doing... At some point, um, you know, maybe in the next week or so, I'll do like a, a bonus live stream to, to thank you all for that, but uh, details to follow there. So uh, yeah, and if you haven't subscribed, now's a great time. You can't be one of the first thousand, but uh, you can be one of the first million. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll end it here. Uh, I'm getting delusional. It's like, oh, that's a different channel. Uh, it's like one o'clock in the morning and I got work tomorrow. So let's wrap this up. Uh, as always, I'm Charlie. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade, and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime! overtime.